Good day everyone. Today's topic, we will discuss systems analysis. Here are the subtopics to be discussed. Let us first define systems analysis. Here are three definitions of systems analysis. According to sciencedirect.com, systems analysis or system analysis is the process by which an individual or individuals studies a system such that an information system can be analyzed, modeled, and a logical alternative can be chosen. ReferenceBusiness.com defines system analysis as the process of examining a business situation for the purpose of developing a system solution to a problem or uh, devising improvements such as a situation. Systems analysis or system analysis is, is the process of observing systems for troubleshooting or development purposes. It is applied to information technology where computer-based systems require defined analysis according to their makeup and design as defined by techopedia.com. There are three reasons why system analysis projects are initiated. First is the organization has a problem. Second, a new opportunity exists to make changes within the organization. And lastly, a directive has been issued that mandates changes to be made. After a project is initiated, project proposal must be done. The project proposal is an attempt to respond to or take advantage of a certain scenario, and it is a nece uh, necessary component for starting the system analysis correctly. System projects involving many departments and users uh, are typically uh, approved by a committee rather than an individual. When a project proposal is presented to a committee, it is assessed or it assesses its merits and decides whether or not it should be approved. The committee is made up of persons from various organizational functional areas who are interested in the proposed systems operation and information. So what should be the content of a project proposal? Although there are no hard uh, and fast rules when it comes to the format and content of a project proposal, it should include the following information. The first, the specifics of the business situation or problem. Second, the significance of the problem to the organization. Third, alternative solutions. Fourth, the possible use of computer information. Lastly, the various people interested in or proposing knowledge relevant to the problem. We now go to system, uh, Systems Development Life Cycle or SDLC. Okay. Uh, the Systems Development Life Cycle or SDS, SDLC is a sequence of stages that results in the creation of a new computer information system. But before uh, we continue, let me first discuss to you what feasibility study is. 
A feasibility study looks into the problem and the stakeholders' information needs. It aims to assess the resources needed to create an information system solution as well as the cost and advantages of doing so, as well as the solution's feasibility. A feasibility study's goal is to consider various information system solutions, assess their practicality, and recommend the best option for the firm. The analyst conducting the study gathers information using a variety of methods, the most popular of which are Interviewing users, employees, managers, and customers. Second, developing and administering questionnaires to the interested stakeholders, such as potential users of the information system. Third, observing or monitoring users of the current system to determine their needs as well as their satisfaction and dissatisfaction with the current system. Fourth, collecting, examining, and analyzing documents, reports, layouts, procedures, manuals, and any other documentation relating to the operations of the current system. Lastly, modeling, observing, and simulating the work activities of the current system. Now, let us continue uh, with SDLC, particularly with SDLC phases. The SDLC is a process for resolving problems. A number of actions are delineated for each step in the process. The, pre uh, the business uh, predicament will be solved if these actions are completed in the order stipulated by the SDLC. Now, the phases of the SDLC process are as follows. First is the preliminary investigation. In the preliminary investigation, the problem is defined and investigated. Due to limited resources, an organization can undertake only those projects that are critical to its mission, goals, and objectives. Therefore, the goal of preliminary investigation is, is uh, simply to identify and select a project for development from among all the projects that are under consideration. Second is requirements definition. The uh, requirements definition specifies or uh, are the specifics of the current system as well as the requirements of the proposed new system uh, are studied and defined. Next, we have system design. A general design is developed with the purpose of planning for the construction of the new system. The next is systems development. Okay, uh, in the systems development, the new system is, of course, created. Next, we have system installation. Okay, so this is the current operation or the current operation is converted to run on the new system. Next, we have systems evaluation and monitoring. This means that the newly operational system is evaluated and monitored for the purpose of enhancing its performance and adding value to its function. As you can see in this diagram, it is a cycle. So it means that looping back from a later phase to an earlier one may occur if the need arises. Now, each 
phase includes its own set of development activities. Some of these activities may occur in multiple phases. Across all phases, management actively is fairly consistent. The SDLC is not a standard or the standard and may differ from one company to the next. In other words, from one SDLC to the next, the titles and number of phases may differ. However, uh, the SDLC describes below or described uh, here okay, is for the most part representative of what is commonly used by businesses. At each phase, certain activities are performed. Now, the, re the result of these activities are documented in a report identified with that phase and management reviews the results of the uh, reviews the results of the phase and determines if the project is to proceed to the next phase. We now go to the different classifications of systems. We identify three classifications, physical or abstract system, open, closed system, and